All right, well, welcome to the postseason and to a new episode of Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long. The Los Angeles Rams are a 10-win team. They are the sixth seed. They're going to Detroit for Wild Card Weekend. And our guest just finished his ninth professional season. He's actually one of three players who predate Sean McVay and this coaching staff. He is right tackle Rob Havenstein. You've been on the program before, but it's been a while. Thank you for stopping by to preview the postseason. How are you, Rob? I'm great. I'm great. You know, Thanks for having me on. Uh, congratulations on another regular season in the books. I mentioned it's your ninth. We're going to talk about the year gone by. We're going to talk about the trip to Detroit, but I want to reflect on week 18 first. I know mm-hmm. you played the better part of half of it, sure. um, and we'll talk about the offensive line and some other things that went on. But since it ended on defense, why don't we start there? I love the poetic finish where three rookies kind of combine right. on a pressure, a forced fumble, and a recovery. In so many ways, that's kind of the the narrative arc of the 23 Rams, isn't it? Yeah, no, 100%. You know, we knew coming in this season we were going to we were going to be young and we were going to be really young and we were going to have some growing pains and learn how to do things in the NFL and uh, you know, it's just a personal, you know, testament to those guys, to Kobe, to Byron and who who was the third? Who recovered? Deswan Johnson off his helmet. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's kind of right. For, gets the yep, forced fumble. Yep, yep, yep. Strip sack. You know, those guys to come in and uh, you know, to impact a game and you know, to seal the game and you know, get the victory for us, you know, just just a true testament to them, but a true testament to the team of kind of how we've come together. Our young guys have really kind of bought into what we've been what we've been preaching, what Sean's been preaching, you know, really, you know, ever since the bye week. And then, you know, we've been you know, taking it from there. I know he didn't play yesterday, but Brock Purdy, that's kind of Mr. Irrelevant's home. And sure. the Rams, Mr. Irrelevant, gets the, the clinching strip yeah. sack. I, I love how that all came full circle. Okay, I know all last week was kind of spent saying it doesn't matter who we play, six or seven seed, not important to us. We just got to get in it to win it. Mm -hmm. Now that it's gone by, what did a 10th win really mean to the Rams? You know, winning is always going to be obviously a good thing, whether it really mattered or not, what seed we went in at, where we played, who we played. But there's something to be said about just winning and uh, for whether it was, you know, all backups in there, you know, stuff like that uh, in, in week 18, we we're still out there playing football and they're still on this team. And so guys got valuable experience, game time experience, crunch time experience. And, and I could 100 percent tell you it mattered to us, you know, for the guys who were out there playing. It mattered to them. They took it seriously. They, you know, it wasn't like, oh, let's just get out of here and, you know, go on to the mm-hmm. next week. It was let's go ahead and find a way to go ahead and work my craft in a game situation where maybe my opportunities have been limited this season so i think guys took a real good good step forward on that thought it was a special day for two individuals i want to call out in particular tutu atwell on offense sure. and russ yeast on defense and kind of similar stories like ready to step into big roles starters on the front half of the schedule have to make room for some other emerging talents and yet they're in crunch time did they ever make winning plays how impressive is that that individuals like that on this team were ready to step back into the occasion yeah no i mean I mean, you said it perfectly, like, obviously there's, you know, being in the NFL is tough. And sometimes there's some good things that happen. Sometimes there's some bad things that happen. But if you're confident about yourself as a man, then you're going to do what you need to do to go ahead and make sure that you can help out this team first off, but that you're making strides about getting better at football. You know, once you come out of college, you're not at your peak. You're not even close. Mm -hmm. There's still a lot of growth that needs to happen for everyone individually as a player. And that's something that takes guys a little bit longer to, to realize. Not those two guys. Those two guys have, you mm-hmm. know, really 100% locked in to what they need to do. And for Russ to make those two big hits on the sideline, I mean, that changed the game. Um, like 100%, you go second and 10 or, you know, an explosive down the field. Now we're flirting with they, they can do what they want on offense because they only need 10, 15 yards or something like that. So, you know, testament to Russ. And then 2-2, two, two, just staying ready. Uh, you know, watching him, obviously, on offense, I could see 2-2 two, two a little bit more. But... You know, the way he goes about his business, the way he practices, the way he gets after it, you know, it's definitely uh, it's it's not a surprise to anyone. I love what you said there. Like careers aren't linear. Right. Like you can have snap counts reduced or even miss time. Right. For injury or other reasons and yet still make forward progress mm-hmm. as an individual and as a team. And I think that's true of Carson Wentz, too, of course. Mm-hmm. What was it like going through the week of preparation with him and then just hearing him in the huddle on a game day? Yeah, you know, Carson, obviously, in the huddle, you can tell he's been there before. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, there was no shakiness to his voice. There was no this, no that. And, you know, he could tell it's, uh, I think he said he t- it was his 
definitely a high for rushing attempts in his career. But you know, the, like what he was asked to do and the and the pride he took in it, and the way he took practice over and you know really kind of made it like okay, I, you know, when I'm running the show, I'm running the show. And that was a uh, you know that was it's definitely a confidence thing when you get, you're in there in the huddle and you know your quarterback spitting out the play like all right, let's get this done. It's not like a you know a question mark at the end of the play. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, but of course, get out there. It's definitely awesome to see him. You know, after spending. How many weeks has it been since Carson's been with us? Since the bye. Remember. Since the bye. Yep. There you go. Um, but, you know, after, you know, kind of, you know, knowing him and kind of, you know, growing a friendship with Carson, you know, he's an awesome guy, loves football. The way he, you know, you see him after practice, he's, you know, he's the one guy running um, coaches on fly motions and, and, and everything like that, you know, just kind of trying to get the timing down on the offense. So, you know, he puts in the work, he puts in the hours. It's something that's important to him. And so when he got his chance, you know, he stepped up and played big. But you're telling me that design quarterback draws were not something you repped as part of your first 16 game plans this season? <laughs> uh, no, no, there was, uh, there was not too many, uh, too many of that for Matthew, but you know, maybe we'll sprinkle it in here, uh, upcoming to Detroit. Another neat wrinkle, uh, Sean McVay kind of passes the play sheet over to Michael LaFleur, who's the first year offensive coordinator here. I think he's had a really positive impact. You tell me, but what was that like to have him running the show from the booth and, and calling your plays? You know, that's actually news to me. I didn't know that. Come on, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, no, that's actually, that's, that's awesome to hear. You know, Mike is, uh, Mike's done an excellent job with the offense, the way he talks in, in, uh, in meetings and presents himself in front of the room. You know, he's got a confidence about him. You know, he's he he's never had a bad day. Not that I can see. He's always smiling, just loves ball. And so, you know, when it's coming like that, and, he, and if that's the case, then I think he called a pretty good game. Wasn't it coming off the wristband? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that much was different, too, in terms of this, the operation. Yep. yep. Yeah, with the operation. But I've done that before with, you know, backup quarterbacks kind of coming in as, uh, you know, kind of limited reps instead of, you know, trying to hear the whole thing in the, in the helmet, you know, just slap it down, read it out. Whether he's reading it or it's coming in from a – from the mic makes a little difference to me. So plays were still coming in. Obviously they looked a little different than what we've done in the first, uh, the first 16 games. But, um, you know, I thought Mike called the, called a great game. If there you go. That's the case. So seamless. You didn't even know it. Right. right tackle exactly. Spot. Uh, Puka Nakua's record next, if we can, and you and the entire starting offensive line were there to begin the game. You were there to begin the third quarter mm. as you try and get him those marks. What was that ambition like? collectively and what did it mean to you to see it happen before your day was done well i just want to say that you know puka is an out outstanding guy like for him to have that record it could have gone to a better person um you know the guys the guy has fun with everything he's a you know true competitor he, you know loves loves getting after it um and for him to have the success that he's had has just been awesome to see you know the physicality he brings the smartness the just the joy for the game you know sometimes he'll kind of He'll scream himself out of breath, and you gotta, you know, go ahead and get him a water after, you know, he's been, you know, makes a big catch on the sideline. And he realized, like, hey, buddy, we got to keep playing. Like, let's woo saw this a little bit, you know, and let's let's keep going. But uh, to be there out there to let him get his um, his record to be in the record books is just it's just awesome. It kind of just goes to show you, you know, how good of good of a season he's had and how good of a person he is, and you know, couldn't have been happier for it. No, it's happy we, you know, we got the the dang thing out the way though, so we can go, <laughs> go ahead and start playing some football. You know what I mean? It was it was kind of like one of those, uh, you know, it was we needed one catch in one yard or something like that, and he's like, all right, get him out of the game. Let, you know, let's get going a little sure. bit, and you know, start calling some, uh, you know, you know how, how we would normal normally call a game rather than you know tr you know trying to get the record. But you know, it was a uh, it was definitely needed to be done. You know, I I hundred percent wanted him to get it. Um, so when I heard it, you know, heard he was playing and he was going to get it and get out, I was like, yeah, it's awesome. You know, ha couldn't have been happier for him. You know, he's, his locker's right next to mine. So oh, no I you know, spent a, uh, you know, good time kind of, kind of shooting the breeze with him. So, you know, he's an awesome guy and happier, couldn't have been happier for him. And you capped that drive off with a touchdown right. to his eventual replacement, Tyler Johnson. Exactly. And then you get to pack it in for the postseason, right? Yep, exactly. Right. So it all worked out. You touched on the joy that he brings to the field. And joy, I think, is the word that's characteristic of the 23 Rams. And it preceded the wins. Or at least I want to make the case, Rob, that it preceded the wins. Sometimes sure. winning's the best deodorant, right? And especially winning, where you were last season. But like, am I wrong that there was something about this group and the approach that they took that predated all the wins and definitely was still there at three and six? There was to a point. Obviously, winning is, like you said, the best deodorant. Like there's there's nothing that you know, when something hurts, winning always makes it feel better. You know what I mean? So it's, um, 
that's always the end goal. But with how young we are, and not to say this in a bad way, but you know, we're kind of ignorant to some of the, you know, the NFL life because we're so young, mm-hmm. and that's a good thing. The blissful ignorance, exactly. A, you know, a, a blissful ignorance. You know, guys are out there. I mean, you, you talk about guys just playing for the love of the game, like. You know, I know Kyron's not a rookie, but Kyron's, Kyron's a young guy. You know, the juice he brings, the season he's had has been awesome. The way, he, you know, the way he goes about his business. Uh, Steve, uh, I'm going to pronounce this wrong. Avila. Avila. That's what it is. That's what I was going to say. He's just Steve to you? Yeah, he's just Steve. Okay. Big Steve. And, um, you know, this, the joy that, like, just the, the, you know, the unhinging joy that he plays with. You know, he just he's just out there playing ball, playing a game he loves. There's no, you know, there's no... There's no bad part to it. He's just out there having fun. He's just 100 percent himself, mm-hmm. and you know to see that is you know as you know an older guy finishing my ninth season. You know, honestly, it is refreshing to come on and be like you know like this is the game we love playing. This is you know how it's meant to be played, and then you know anything that we can uh, as older guys kind of influence on the younger guys to you know maybe prepare prepare the right way you know everything like that everything got to answer questions but that you know just seeing the joy of you know him running down mic'd up last week was you know it was, mm-hmm. it was honestly cool to see i'm glad you said that because you've seen nine complete rams rosters is that what distinguishes this one like when you look back and tell friends and family what was different about this group you think that's it the element you just touched on yeah yeah well, i mean with how with how young we are and just i think we're a complete team um and that's not saying that that's not exclusively to on the field that's just like like we're a connected locker room we don't have we don't have problem people we don't have a problem in the locker room like everything's good everything's gelling and we have great competitiveness out there on the practice field so we can kind of you know we talk our smack on the practice field (laughs) you know get people going or i think ernest jones is you know one of the best at that and for him to be a captain this year you know awesome because he brings such a juice when we do go competitive one-on-ones in the seat uh during the season and that's another um, kind of change we took at the bye week. Sean was going to put an emphasis on that, and like, let's go good on good. Let's let's get what we can out of practice, you know, out of practice, and mm-hmm. push each other to get better. It's not just a dress rehearsal. Like we're going there to get better for this game, for the season, for each player individually. And so I think it's been I think it's been fun. So that's probably what I'd say. He's a captain. You are too. And I remember the model the way shirts mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I thought that meant a lot. I thought that was a great theme for this season that Sean came up with outside. Maybe it got some yucks, but like <laughs> how much pride do you take now as a 10 win playoff team, having modeled the way, having been one of those captains that helped get this under class to their first postseason? Yeah. You know, if I had a little bit, a little part in that, you know, obviously, you know, beyond my, my, my right tackle role, um, you know, as a leader, um, I think we just have such good leaders on this team. When you talk about a Cooper cup and Matthew Stafford, the way uh, Aaron Donald has taken over the defensive side of the ball and not just on his play, but you know, you got guys in there with their shirts off doing curls, you know, 24 <laughs> seven, you know, the whole, whole defense is hitting abs, you know, trying to get abs like AD, but you know, that's just like, to me, that's modeling the way, like, Maybe he told them to do this. Maybe he didn't. But people just see the way Aaron works, and they're like, "Well, he's the one of the best to ever do it. So why wouldn't I work like that? Why why wouldn't I jump in there with him?" And so it's just uh, for us to have those type of guys, and that's not even hitting on on, on what Matthew brings. Sure. So, but it's um, you know special group of guys and just honored to be a part of it honestly i know i'm taking a long time to get to matthew and to the lions we'll get there but but i also think this is just the right moment in time to talk about where you've been and where you might go next and going back to even 2020 i wonder if there were seeds of this season and this turnaround in the depths of last year yeah you know with with a hard year with a good year and years past it's all experience it's 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 all it's all in how you take it, whether good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, you got to take, you got to take the growth. You got to take the good in things in your past experiences and take them the right way and push yourself to become better. Like I was, like I mentioned earlier, like you know, you, you're not at the the peak of your your you as a player. Like there's still growing that needs to happen, and sometimes the best growth is through difficult situations. And I, you know, last year was not the easiest situation to be a part of. What were we five and twelve? And some of those were, uh, you know, not great. Um, but it's for everyone that was there on that team and stayed around. It was a long look inward about, all right, how do I make sure that doesn't happen within my role of the team? And I think we did that this year. And then we brought in a lot, a lot of young talent who came in and produced and embraced the culture and, and got after it. And, you know, here we are sitting at 10-7. 
don't have to respond to this, but I'll always remember about that season that you were the one who was there for all 17 of those on the offensive line. So yep. kudos to you. Thank you. Um, I've been saying in writing since the summer that I think the offensive line was the strongest, the deepest, the most improved unit on this team. I'm glad it came to fruition and it's because of your hard work. So can we go down the line and just briefly roll call and discuss each individual who made that happen? Let's start nearest to you, your, your left shoulder, Kevin Dotson. When they make that trade and when they bring him in, I know he didn't plug and play right mm -hmm. away, but now that you see it come to fruition, how meaningful was that? Yeah, obviously very meaningful. I mean, K Dot's a, you know, he is a, a tried and true guard. Um, you know, big barrel chested, strong dude, you know, plays angry, plays mean. Um, you know, he's a true guard, and for him to pick up the offense the way he did, and even when he kind of wasn't unsure about stuff, he wasn't prideful. So he could turn around and ask, I tell him, and then we, and then, you know, okay, got it, boom, play looks great. Um, and that's kind of early on when he was, uh, you know, still kind of learning everything. But, you know, K Dot's done an excellent job. Uh, the way he, the way he's responsive in meetings for being a, you know, a new guy in the room, and uh, you know, it's just been, it's just been awesome. And just getting to know him, you know, he's he is one funny dude. You, May not seem like it, but he is he is, he is a he is a funny guy, and so he's a uh, he's a great addition to the room. Center Coleman Shelton. Yeah, Coleman is um, Coleman's a grinder. Um, it's just nothing more needs to be said about that. I mean, this guy has you know had opportunities. I don't want to say taken away, but uh, you know, in 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 years past, maybe not maybe not even here, but no one wanted to give Coleman uh, you know a chance. Coleman just kept playing well and well and kept doing the right things and getting better and better and better to it basically came to the point of like, okay, we, we can't, you know, we can't not give him, give him an opportunity because the way this guy works, the way he takes control of the offense, the way he cares about, um, getting us in and out of the right plays in working with Matthew. And then even, um, uh, you know, him, him and Brian Allen, you know, for Brian to be the starter last year and then to back up this year, the way Coleman and Brian have worked together and bounced off of like, you know, two of the best, they're two of the best friends on the team, you know, that they're after practice, working on cans, working on film, talking about defense tackles, what works, what doesn't work against certain guys. And just that whole collaboration, you know, yeah. in, in the center just gives you a lot of confidence because me as a tackle half the time, I just got to shut up and listen to what the center says. <laughs> so when we talk about our third down plan and our run can plan, you know, I'd, I don't have to know it like a center does. Obviously I got to worry about other yeah. things, but you know, if there's ever, if, I, if I'm, it, if I am ever unsure about something, I'm going to shut up and listen to the center because I 100% know he, know he's on the dot with it. I think it's an underrated piece to this offensive line is having a Super Bowl winning center, Brian Allen, there backing up oh, no and doing, doing some of that dirty work. You've touched on Steve a little bit already, so maybe we just spin it forward. Based on what he did as a rookie, how bullish are you on Avila's future? I mean, sky's the limit with Steve. Um, the way he's gone out and played, um, the way he's fixed things through his practice and then – the way he's grown as a professional, especially in the meeting room, because that's where a lot of it can get done. Because you can ask questions, and he was a little a little nervous to ask questions at first when when Steve first got here, because because his reason reasoning was uh, he over explained his questions, <laughs> which I'm like don't care at, at all. But I need to I need to hear you speak about the game so I understand how you understand the game, and that was just kind of a concept he didn't really didn't understand fully coming in because he didn't want to say something stupid and and everyone coleman brian aj were like no we want like just speak how you would speak about the game so i can so when it comes you know to you know nut cutting time i know how you're thinking about this block and you know how i'm thinking about this mm -hmm. block and then you come together you know as you know a left guard left tackle right guard right tackle you know center to both guards like you know that's when you know, you know how it's going to be fit and how the how the defenders play in you, and then it's, it turns out to be a good block. So, and let's go to left tackle next. I know you've got some roots in Michigan, which we'll speak about. But uh, Alaric Jackson's from Windsor, Ontario. Right. You know, went to high school in Detroit. I can't imagine what's going through his mind uh, and his family as he gets set to go play the Detroit Lions. But he's another one of those guys that wasn't given anything, was he? Kind of had to earn this spot. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, he, um, you know him. It, him and Joe were given, you know, the opportunity, you know, to, to win left tackle at the beginning of the year. And AJ obviously came out, you know, came out on top on that aspect. And, you know, I think he's done an absolute excellent job though over there playing left tackle. He's a, uh, his game day demeanor would be one of stoic, you know, he's just a stoic guy where he's just, you know, straight, you know, straight face, boom, nothing shakes him, nothing rattle, rattles him. Um, 
there's good, there's good conversation in the meeting rooms between him and Steve, me and him. If I see something that, you know, that, you know, someone had taught me in the past, you know, I'll go ahead and relay that information. It's always very, you know, like, okay, I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying. I'll, I'll write it down. And then he takes what works with for him mm -hmm. and implements it to his game. And it's not everything I say because everything, I, I don't want him to do everything I say. <laughs> I want him to take what he feels like can help him and then put it into his game. And that's exactly what's been going on. But he's been a, uh, you know, he's been a rock over there at left tackle. And if you guys were a hoops team, then uh, Joe Noteboom would be six man of the year. No, hundred percent. I mean, how vital has it been to have that break glass in case of emergency option? Right. You know, to have, you know, another starter as a backup, you know, we got two luckily with Brian and Joe and um, you know, that just, that makes us better because, you know, unfortunately I missed a couple games this year and it's just plug and play. You don't feel you have to protect a certain guy or change the offense or do anything because Joe's that just that, you know, that solid of a guy, that solid of a player. And so that's just the, especially, especially with all the positions he's been playing, right guard, left guard. No, he hasn't played left guard, right guard, left tackle, right tackle. Like that's hard. A lot mm -hmm. of people think like, oh, going from right to left is, is easy, but it's like, it's doing everything backwards. Your outside hand becomes your inside hand. Your feet are backwards. Everything just feels off. Um, and for Joe to do that seamlessly, sometimes without a lot of notice, is uh, you know just an absolute testament to him, and I couldn't be happier for Joe. I mean, so many people deserve credit, including Wendy, your position coach. I hate to skip ahead, but I do want to ask about Mike Munchak, just seeing him around this facility. Sure. To have a Hall of Famer right. in the building as a consultant, you know, he's been a head coach, he's been an offensive line coach. Can you give us an example of how he would contribute, for instance, to a game plan like the one you're about to put together? Yeah, every Thursday that you know he's he's around town. Um, he basically runs the meeting. Him and him and Zach, and I think that's like you said. Uh, you know, uh, kudos to Wendy is that he's you know his he doesn't have Wendy doesn't have pride, so he sits back and lets M Munch and Zach Cromer take in our uh, our third down meeting about how they see how the rushers were going against, how they like to rush, how they operate on each side versus certain. For uh, certain looks that tackles w will give or guards will give or centers will give. And, you know, he just the way he talks about the game, it's just it's just so conversation like it's not coaching. Like it's a conversation that you're like, oh, man, that's a really good way to look at that. Hmm. You know, he's not just, you know, boring stuff into you. It's just like a true conversation where it's easy to pick up. It's easy to digest. It's easy to understand. And for him and then you kind of, like you said, look back at, you know, what he's done in the past. And like, he's a Hall of Fame guard, you know, I, I've been telling him for weeks, like I would just show up here and in the gold jacket and just walk around, <laughs> walk around with him just because, I mean, I mean, I mean, you got the dang thing, but you know, for, uh, for Mike Munchak to be around and, you know, care, um, and to give us his, his opinion on how, how it is. And, you know, I've, I've, I've talked to him in kind of during a, during a little lunch break for a couple of weeks. And sometimes it's about ball. Sometimes it's about life and, you know, anything that man can say that you can pick up is definitely going to help you. So, you know, couldn't be happier that he's he's been around. I've been around you enough to know that you probably won't answer this question. But um, was it your best season? Oh, you're right. I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> well, then let me say it for you. I hope sooner rather than later you get some of the recognition and the accolades that you've deserved for a long oh, time in this it. league. You've been in a unique position of having been in a championship huddle with both Jared Goff and Matthew Stafford, the quarterbacks for this weekend. Yep. What's your reaction when you find out the Rams are going to Detroit? You know, first reaction was I'm excited that we're in the playoffs. Um, I'm excited to go go play a football game, have an opportunity to go compete for a world title again. Um, having been there twice, won one, you know, it's addicting. That's, that's, a, that's what I want to do again. Um, I know it's everyone's job to get out there and sell storylines and stuff like that, but I think for this team, the way I'm going to – I'm going to instruct our our room like this is this is playoff football. It's there's like obviously there's great storylines in it and everything like that. But when it comes down to playing football, like that's what we're here for. So the one thing I do know is uh, Detroit has one heck of a defense. Mm -hmm. um, they play well together. They've got uh, they've got superstars and then they've got role players who play their role very well and they all work extremely well together and it is a tough defense and it's going to be a tough place to play that you know i haven't had a home playoff game in what 30 years mm -hmm. place is going to be rocking it's going to be electric we're going to be on silent count anyway so it doesn't really matter if you can't really hear too much so um you know i'm just, i'm excited for the opportunity to go play 
just this morning I was thinking about that NFC Championship game in New Orleans where Jared's kind of pressing everything he can into his ear holes to keep the noise out of the Superdome. I well, feel like Sunday's going to be a lot like that. Sure, no, 100%. And that was that was one of the loud, loudest experiences I've, I've ever been a part of. I remember Jared calling plays, and I'm leaning over to uh, my right guard, Austin Blythe, and the hell did he just say? <laughs> so he kind of, wh- you know, not whisper, scream in my ear, just the kind of the nuts and bolts of what I needed to hear. Boom, got it. Okay, you know, let's go play football. But it was loud, and I think it's going to be something like that again. What is different about the postseason in the National Football League? Everything just gets everything gets tighter. Everything gets harder. Everything's just you can't afford to let something slip and expect to go to go win the game. Um, so I think your preparation has to be that much more turned up, that much more on point. You have to recover harder. You have to. You know, whether it's you're eating to put on weight or, you know, maintain a certain weight, you like you got to do that better. You got to do everything better. Your home life's got to be better, whatever it is. Everything just has to be better. Um, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the goal is just the goal is not to play a pretty game or a complete game or anything like that. The goal is to win. Mm-hmm. And so however you can get that done, just go win. Didn't come this far just to come this far, right? Exactly. Tell us about your roots in Michigan and what you're going to go through. Speaking of your family life, uh, yeah, going back so, to Detroit. Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm originally from Maryland. Uh, Mom and dad moved down to Maryland um, from Michigan. Uh, my dad's from Taylor, and my mom's from St. Louis. Um, and I got family in East Lansing. They were I had some family in Alma, and now they're in uh, uh, Fenton, up in uh, Lake comma michigan not lake michigan just the the city of lake um and so you know i've got a you know i've been to michigan growing up you know every year for for a lot of years you know great place cool place so i haven't heard too much on the old ticket side of things but uh that's good yeah so we'll see how that goes i hear it's a tough ticket Oh, I can imagine. I can imagine it's going to be a tough one. Rob, I've really enjoyed the conversation. I've learned so much. We finish uh, Rams Revealed with three and out. Our closing segment, i got three final questions for you, and then we'll get you to the game plan for the Detroit Lions. Sound good? Sounds great. So first question, if Andrew Whitworth played until age 40, then Rob Havenstein <laughs> can play until he's fill in uh, the blank. I can play until I'm done. Okay. Another decade. We'll see. All right. I hope so. Uh, We talked a little pizza before the show. And so I think this is kind of a take your pick. Multiple choice here. Detroit style, Mm -hmm. Chicago deep dish, Mm -mm. a New York slice, or fill in the blank with a a ride in ballot. Mm. My wife would go Detroit style. Okay. Um, I'd probably go New York slice. Really? Good solid New York slice. Cup pepperonis, cup piece of sausage, maybe a little cow to sprinkle on top. Can't go wrong with that. Did you catch one before the Giants game? No. Gosh, no. No. no Too no, disciplined no. this time of year. Yeah, well. Sorry to tempt you. No. You already said you got to button up the diet this time yeah, of year in the place. Exactly. Uh, that, that's a missed opportunity by me. Uh, finally, I want to talk uh, girl dad power with you. Yep. I feel like that's kind of been a, a secret ingredient for sure. the 2023 Los Angeles Rams. Uh, your youngest was born last March. Mm-hmm. You got three girls now. Carson's got three girls. Matthew's got four, I believe. Four. Wendy's got a, a bunch of girls as mm-hmm. well. So... What is it like to be the father of daughters, and how does that make you a better pro? Well, sometimes it can definitely test your patience a little bit, but um, you know, it's uh, to kind of have have three daughters and have you know these you know these angels at home. You know that it's just it's just uh, it's so vastly different than what we get here at the facility lifting weights playing football you know because you know when i go home it's they could give you know two f's about what happened at football and so whether good bad or indifferent during practice during the games they don't care they just want to play you know and it's uh to be able to kind of force yourself to understand about how to check that stuff at the door really gives you a chance to kind of digest what you're feeling, how you're feeling, what's actually important, what do you need to do to get better at football while you're all, well, for me doing this, you know, playing Barbies, you know, at, at my house. And it's, uh, it's been a learning experience, um, but it's, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade it for the world. So if Matthew's daughters tell him pregame, don't get tackled, daddy, do right. your daughters tell you 
Uh, no, nope. Daddy, don't let Matthew get tackled. <laughs> no, I don't think they're uh, they're that in tune with the game of football now. They've been coming to the games just so they can watch Bluey the whole time, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much, but it's um, good strategy. But it's uh, they always send me pregame. Uh, m- my wife makes sure of this, where it's uh, they always just chant "Go, Daddy, go!" And so sometimes, you know, half the time it's you know they're in their you know their little outfits, or they only yeah. come out looking like absolute barbarians, and they're both in underwear with their hair hair is all tied up, <laughs> and they got marker down their chest and everything like that. And you know, you're just getting getting wild videos, and you just kind of laugh and smile and be like, okay, you know, that was a that's that's what it's all about right there. Rob, it's been a real privilege to check in with you and to, to see you grow up as a Ram and you and your young family, too. We wish you all the best. Thank and uh, here's to a successful postseason run with the well, Los Angeles Thank you. Rams. I appreciate it. All Thanks right. For, for Rob me. Havenstein, I'm JB Long. LA off to Detroit. Wild card weekend, Sunday night in primetime. Cannot wait. Thank you for joining us for a very special postseason edition of Rams Review. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our videos.